In this video, I will discuss another method of uh, determining an integrating factor. So, we have uh, discussed integrating factors. Uh, I have introduced this uh, topic or this concept with the start of our linear differential equation. So, this time, the differential equation is uh, not necessarily linear. So, we have the general differential equation m dx plus n dy is equal to 0. Now, let's say we have a, an integrating factor, which is uh, mu. So, therefore, if I multiply that, I'll have mu m dx plus mu n dy is equal to 0. Now, the concept of integrating factor is that when you have determined the integrating factor, your uh, differential equation becomes exact. So, if it's exact, then the partial derivative of mu m with respect to y would be equal to the partial derivative of uh, mu n with respect to x. And uh, if that is true, then the partial derivative, then if I will uh, apply product rule, then this will be mu times partial derivative of m with respect to y plus n m times the partial derivative of uh, mu with respect to y would be equal to mu times the partial derivative of n with respect to x plus uh, n times the partial derivative of uh, mu with respect to x. Okay, So let's say I want to solve for mu. So I'll have partial derivative of m with respect to y minus mu times partial derivative of n with respect to x is equal to uh, n times the partial derivative of uh, mu with respect to x minus m times the partial derivative of mu with respect to y. Okay? So if we factor our integrating factor, we'll have mu times the partial derivative of m with respect to y minus partial derivative of m with respect to x is equal to n partial derivative of mu with respect to x minus m times the partial derivative of uh, mu with respect to y. Now, let's say that uh, mu is a function of x alone. So this is a function of x alone. Then, therefore, your uh, partial derivative of uh, mu with respect to x will become the derivative of uh, mu with respect to x. And your uh, partial derivative of uh, mu with respect to y would be equal to 0 because... Uh, this is a function of x alone. So therefore, this will become 0. Now, our equation will now become mu times partial derivative of m with respect to y minus partial derivative of n with respect to x is equal to n times d mu over dx. Now, uh, simplify this further. We could determine uh, mu already. This will now become 1 over n, cross multiply, partial derivative of uh, m with respect to y minus partial derivative of n with respect to x is equal to, so differential x will be here, times differential x, again, cross multiply, is equal to uh, differential of uh, my mu over mu. So, you can clearly see here that uh, we have already solved for our mu. And why is that? Let's say that the left side of our equation, this one, becomes a function of x. This one is a function of x. Then therefore, we'll have f of x, f of x dx is equal to d mu over mu. Okay? The uh, differential of uh, mu over mu. Then therefore, if we will integrate, then this will be equal to ln of mu, integral of uh, f of x dx, and mu would uh, simply be equal to e raised to the integral of f of x dx. So that, that is uh, another formula that uh, we can use to solve for our, uh, to solve for our integrating factor. Now, we have to remember that f of x here your f of x here is equal to this one, 1 over n times the quantity, 
partial derivative of m with respect to y minus partial derivative of n with respect to x. Okay? So, remember that uh, method. Now, if, uh, of course, if your mu, kasi dito kanina, we have assumed that mu is a function of uh, x alone. Now, it could be possible that uh, your mu is a function of y alone. Then, therefore, in that case, your derivative of uh, mu with respect to x is 0, and this one is the derivative of uh, mu, with re mu with respect to y. So, in that case, your integrating factor will become, will become mu is equal to uh, e raised to the integral of the negative of g of y dy, and your g of y is equal to 1 over m times a quantity partial derivative of m with respect to y minus uh, partial derivative of n with respect to x. Okay? So let's uh, box that. So we have two cases. First, if you divide n, okay, you divide n and it becomes a function of x alone. And the second case, if you divide m and it becomes a function of y alone. 